Thank you for joining us this evening for our worship service. Although we would love to be in person, uh, we are playing it safe and, 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 and being cautious with the COVID numbers the way they are. And, uh, and so we wanted to uh, have this as a virtual service this evening. And we welcome you to worship. And we begin our worship as we do in our normal manner, uh, making the sign of the cross in remembrance of our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight's worship service will be a little bit briefer than what we have been doing, although that's hard to believe because our worship services, if only on Wednesdays, Advent services, have only been about 30 minutes uh, or so. So it, it's, it, they've been pretty short as it is. But tonight's service will consist of our gospel reading, which was chosen for tonight from Luke chapter 1, verses 30, 39 to 56, as, and then a, a homily. And so we take a look at Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 39. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she ex exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name, and his mercy is for those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. So far, our gospel reading. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have children, they said. It will be fun, they said. A little boy comes into his parents' room and he quietly stares at his father as he sleeps, slowly leaning in, and then he says, Daddy. The dad is startled awake. Rubbing his eyes, he sees his four-year-old son staring there, standing there in front of him. And just over his shoulder on the alarm clock, he sees that it's 1.43 a.m. Son, what is it? Why are you awake? I need to go potty. Okay, go ahead. The boy looked down the hallway and down the door of their new home that they just moved into. Now, he's never been down that hallway before by himself, at least not at night, in the dark, with all the shadows and the side rooms and all the ghosts and the goblins that are hiding there. Daddy, uh, please come with me. Normally, son, I would love to, but you know, for some reason, I'm, I'm tired. You go on ahead. Boy shuffles a little bit closer to the door, and then he shuffles back. Daddy, please come with me. Okay. Now, just as the little boy had never been down that road before, Mary 
was about ready to embark down a path that she had never been down before. But she knew that she had to go. As we heard from our reading from Luke, he writes, In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town of Judah, and he entered the house of Zechariah, and he greeted Elizabeth. And she greeted Elizabeth, excuse me. Now, if you recall earlier on in Luke's gospel, he records that in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to be married to a man whose name was Joseph. You know your history, that's good. And he was of the house and the lineage of, yeah, that's right, David. And that virgin's name was Mary. Now the message that the Holy Spirit will come upon her and she will bear a son, Jesus. Now Mary knew that she had never been down that road for sure. Her hallway looked five miles long. And they had many more side rooms and shadows and hiding ghosts and goblins to gobble her up. How was Mary going to explain this to her parents? To Joseph? To her friends? We all know that sinking feeling that we get. That feeling, you know, deep down in your gut when something is wrong. When something is really, really troubling us. Perhaps some of you have that feeling right now. Maybe you're terrified of becoming first-time parents. Or watching your last child leave home. Maybe you are faced with a family situation that has your stomach all tied up in knots. Perhaps you're worried about the pandemic and how it will affect your normal Christmas traditions this year. Whatever our long, dark hallway is, we know that we have never been this way before. And then there's these temptations, and they're at least threefold when it comes to the difficult life situations that we face. First of all, we may be tempted to just do nothing. Certainly, Mary could have done nothing. She could have taken this approach. She could have just stayed put in Nazareth, closed the curtains, locked all her doors, put her phone on, do not disturb, and not seek out any friendships or compassion from anyone. You know, often when we are thrust into difficult life situations, we may find it tempting to just isolate ourselves, to curl up in the fetal position and just pray that somehow, some way, it is all goes away. To do nothing. Now, she could have also taken the second approach, which would be to make excuses. Now, if anyone had a list of valid excuses, it was Mary, that's for sure. I'm too young. You know, she was just a teenager at the time. I'm only engaged to Joseph. We're not even married yet. That's true. We weren't planning to start a family so soon. Oh, and then there's the most obvious excuse of them all. I'm a virgin! Of course, we know this temptation well. We all make excuses, don't we? And if we're honest with ourselves, entirely honest with ourselves, we all have a list of excuses a mile long as to why we won't follow God's leading down those long, dark hallways that we've never been down before. 
That brings us to the third, third temptation or third reaction to difficult situations in life. And that's to become overwhelmed with fear. Many of us know this all too well right now, don't we? And who could blame you? Who could blame Mary? If she too had become paralyzed with fear after listening to the voices telling her to say, say no to courage. Expect the worst. Triple lock your doors. You need to protect yourself in a tight radius of, of won'ts, don'ts, and quits. Think about every possible peril and worry yourself sick with what if. We all know these voices that play out in our heads as well. Overwhelmed with fear, we oftentimes become angry short-fused, and a bear to live with. Yet when God calls us to go down those paths that we have never been down before, he doesn't call us to go down those paths alone. God knows that those long, dark, scary hallways will not be conquered by him promising that he will be with you in spirit. No. A dark hallway requires a real presence. And a real presence is exactly what God delivers. When Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leapt in her womb. And at that moment, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she cried out, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Did you note the joy? Elizabeth's baby, John, ba John the Baptist, rejoices as he leaps in the womb. And Elizabeth, too, she rejoices as she's filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, can you imagine what this does for Mary? It lifts her spirit. She is encouraged and places, and, and it places a resolve in her heart and confidence in her future. And not only this, Mary is reminded of what the angel had spoken to her when he told her that she would bear a son and he should be named Jesus, that he would be the son of the Most High, as Elizabeth refers to Mary as the mother of my Lord. Jesus isn't just an assistant to God. He's not a junior partner in the firm. He isn't second in command. He is a full-fledged member of the Godhead, equal with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus is Lord, God in the flesh. God came down from heaven and he put on the flesh and he made his dwelling, his tabernacle. He made his dwelling among us so that he could be present with us as we go through life's dark journeys. But he didn't stop there. He didn't stop going down. He kept going down, humbling himself to the point of death, yes, even death on a cross. The source of truth is found guilty of a lie. The source of light for three hours hangs in darkness. The source of life is crucified, dead, and buried. Our sin put God in a difficult situation. And this is what his love for you drove him to do. And it's a fierce love for you. Driven by nails. 
marked with seers, crowned with thorns. He rises from the dead to reign and rule our lives with deep compassion and transforming grace. As we finish out our reading from Luke, we discover how Mary responds to what Elizabeth has just called her, the mother of my Lord. Mary says, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Mary walked down her long, dark hallway, and she did it with joy. But her song, Mary's song, the Magnificat, Magnificat, this is our song as well. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Jesus guides us by his real presence, which comes to us in word and in sacrament. And with joy, we await our final journey. A road we've never been down. The resurrection of the body and the life to come. So whatever your long, dark hallway looks like, listen. God is calling you to go. But God promises that he will be with you and that you will never, ever have to go it alone. So like Mary, we can join together taking that step as we rejoice with the Lord, always. And again, I say, rejoice. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and your minds in the one true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen.